we had a three-part roundtable conversation that some of the challenges you may be experiencing, you're no different than me. There is someone there that looks like me, like representation matters. Having come from a time where I was the only black person in the building till today where we've got diversity unlike we've had in the past, it's exciting. Thank you so much for being here and a part of the Black History Month Roundtable. I thought it was important to have the leadership team talk about the progressions we've made, the value we all play in continuing to make moves, as well as kind of where we've been, where we are, and what we would like our vision for the future to be. Um, I think it's important that everyone understands who's at the table and how we all got here. And so I would love if each of us just talked a little bit about our journey to get to where we are today. Um, so just tell us a little bit about who you are and, and how you got to be in the position that you're currently in. We'll start with you, Shannon. <laughs> All right. Um, so I have been here with the Titans almost two, two uh, years now, full two seasons. And before this, um, so I lead our finance team. Before this, I was in public accounting here in Nashville with a company called EY and um, did that for a little over 10 years. And it just so happened that the Titans were one of my audit clients actually. And so I got to um, audit the team for a little over three seasons and really just through building relationships and building networks with the, the folks here, um, was able that when this position came up, um, I was considered for, for the role and very excited about that. Um, sports outside of uh, being on this audit team sports I wasn't in the sports industry and also being a female as well um, it was very humbling to even be considered for this role yeah. um, and so I joined the team uh, back in March of 21 and uh, it's been a whirlwind ever since it's been a lot of fun uh, a journey with a lot of a lot of new folks here as well and um, started just on the finance side, but then got to roll up and work with our uh, people and culture and HR teams. And so diversity has been a big part of all of the new initiatives that we're putting into place. And it's been a fun, fun ride, just kind of getting to create, create new things uh, since I've been around. So, awesome. yeah. What about you, son? Mm -hmm. uh, this is my, well, I just completed my third season uh, with the team um, and approaching my 10th in the NFL. Um, I came to the Titans during COVID, which was a fun transition. Um, uh, I, I wasn't I wasn't expecting that type of experience, and um, let me tell you, it was it was actually easy to slide in here because of how uh, everyone was so welcoming and everyone kind of just brought me in. And you know, the role that I do, um, not every team has it, and we have this vision of, of, of having a premium brand. So I get to do what I do and then I get to be a champion of, of the brand and our team gets to make really great work. Uh, prior to Titans, I was with the Miami Dolphins and then prior to that was in advertising for many years. So I get to, uh, I, I joke that I have the best job in the, in the organization, so. <laughs> what about you, Bert? I, I think it's interesting listening to them uh, talk and I know Tina, your journey, you've been with this organization for a couple of decades now and it, it's- Okay, it's, okay, mm. okay. <laughs> I, I, your your uh, institutional That's a knowledge. That's right, a compliment. right. Yeah. I, it's, uh, it's really interesting that yeah. um, I think a lot of us feel this way. It's, it's, this is a really special organization. It's a really special time to be here and the, the different journeys that some of them are very traditional sports journeys, others, others not at all, and there just feels like it's a, sometimes there's a story that's writing itself, and, and a lot of us are, you know, really lucky to be written into it. My, my journey was uh, certainly non-traditional to be in a position like this. Um, I'm an attorney by trade. I grew up in the Chicagoland area and had, had been working as an attorney in private practice and for some, some corporations for 15, 16 years. Um, I actually uh, saw an advertisement on LinkedIn for the general counsel position with the Titans. And I thought, man, some lucky person's gonna get a really cool job. And uh, my family encouraged me to apply and I did. And I uh, was really excited to make it through the process and, and came down here in 2016, just a couple years after uh, Amy had stepped in. Amy Adams Drunk, our controlling owner, had stepped in as controlling owner. And so there was a lot of change in the organization. Uh, there was a new energy uh, that, that was part of the organization. We got to work on some really fun things. Um, Perhaps most fun was the NFL draft uh, during my time as general counsel and 
just as COVID was starting, our previous uh, president and CEO, Steve Underwood, who's incredibly uh, generous man, mentor, friend of mine, uh, he decided, you know, COVID, this it's thing time. seems like it's going to have some staying power and, and is, is hard. He had already retired once and so decided to retire again and was really honored uh, when Amy asked me to step into his position. Yeah. I think we've all said very similarly how important our culture is, right? And and what the value that it plays into having a successful organization or this being the best job you've ever had, you know? Um, and so when we think about culture and our effort to continue to be progressive in that space, like what, what comes to mind um, from a cultural standpoint point internally and what we present ourselves to those people in our community as well? Yeah. I think first and foremost, our employees. I mean, I think that our employees are incredible and they're kind of the ones that are championing, championing that. Um, and really, I mean, it starts with Amy also, with our owner, Amy Adam Strunk. I mean, she's got um, this kind of family atmosphere here of, uh, yes, we're the big NFL, but we're a privately held family owned company. And so I think it, it starts with kind of that Amy's tone and then really just hiring the best, uh, the best employees that are, you know, they're not settling for anything. They want a, a great, great culture, great purpose-driven um, organization to work for, okay. and we're we're building that. Yeah. yeah. I hadn't been here very long, and one of my favorite colleagues, uh, I won't name him, but uh, we had talked about uh, some some things that he just he, he wanted something different in, in terms of what he was seeing in his experience. It was just it was all you know very. Uh, kind of work and goal related and things like that. But uh, he decided to, to leave for another organization. And I remember asking him, you know, what was ultimately the final decision? And um, he said something about culture. And I asked him to dig a little bit deeper. I'm like, what is it about the, the culture at the place that you're going to or the culture here? And his answer was, I don't know that there is a culture there, which I don't think was an entirely um, uh, accurate comment. I'm not, not sure I agreed with it, but I think the thing that was that stood out to me about that comment was kind of a transition moment for me of saying, we have to be so intentional about what we want out of our culture. If if there's any employee who's not sure what our culture is or that we you know have a culture, um, we've got to be on purpose about you know what we stand for, uh, you know what our values are, and so I think we've had a really good journey over the last few years of asking our employees what. Why, why do you enjoy working here? What, what makes this place different? I mean, it's, a sports organization is a fun place to work, right. no, no question. But at some point, I think all of us can acknowledge, I mean, it's, it's, there, there's still like stresses and strains of the job in a way that um, it, it's gotta be meaningful to you, right? The, the, the coolness of the business card can wear off for some of our employees if it's not a great place to work. And so I, I'm really proud of the work that, that Shannon's team and, and Tina, you're doing to, to help uh, define that culture, be intentional about it, uh, so that it is a great place to work. Yeah. I would say it's interesting because you hear culture, and I've heard of organizations having cultures, but it's toxic. And so being very intentional to that point of making sure that it's a culture that people want to be a part of and are excited to say that they work for this organization. Um, but one thing you said reminded me of a question. Oftentimes when you're having conversations, sometimes they are difficult. How do you navigate those difficult conversations? Because that's what helps move the needle, right? That's when you learn what, where you are and what you need to do to be better. And so just how do you navigate those difficult conversations? I mean, I would, I would say in um, any one conversation that I've, I've had, just being honest and positioning, um, if it's a, the person that you're talking to like making sure that they understand that the things that we're talking about are really like we care it's in their benefit um, we want to try to understand a little more and hopefully it doesn't make the conversation as difficult if the intentions in the right place mm -hmm. um, you know I, that's usually been my um, my go go to if you will um, just just be honest and deeply concerned with whoever it is that you're talking to I mean, I completely agree with everything Sir said. And one of my favorite quotes is, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. And really showing your employees or showing your coworkers that you care and having those transparent conversations. Um, you know, talking about it right away, as soon as it happens, you know, because when you're more transparent about it and you care about either whether it's their development, you turn it into a coaching session, 
or you know, you're working together and you're being vulnerable with them that you don't know the answer either and let's work at it together. Um, so really showing them that you care and really being transparent, I think, are what has, has helped me a lot. Yeah. And hopefully it's not that you're, um, you're starting from flat ground in that conversation, but you've yep. built up trust Absolutely. and you've, you've built up a, a common and mutual respect. You've, you've, I, we really try to, um, to recruit uh, genuine people and humble people, right? Who, um, and that, that's the sort of thing that really shines through so that when you, you have an honest conversation and you're talking about something hard, it feels like it's, it's more easily received when, uh, when you, it comes from that, that base of trust. Yeah. I had a conversation with a couple of colleagues about um, diversity and what it meant to, you know, everyone has their own defined meaning of what diversity may or may not mean to them. And it was a really genuine, great conversation where each one of us walked away learning something. And it was a difficult conversation to have, but because we, because the conversation came from a place of love and trust, it made it a lot easier, right? And so when we think specifically about from a diversity standpoint, where do you think we are? And let's talk a little bit about some things that we are kind of implementing or putting in place so that we are growing uh, beyond from where we are to where we would like to see ourselves in the future. I mean, I would say already from a hiring practices perspective, from you know the employee side of just our organization as a whole has grown a lot, just employee size. And with that, we've been able to kind of cast a broader net on new opportunities for folks, um, whether that be full-time roles or even internships or fellowship programs, trying to do um, be more intentional on as we're growing, um, you know, we're, we're casting that broader net from a hiring perspective is, is one that comes to mind. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think you're probably going to hear that word intentional a lot in this conversation because I think that's where it starts is you, you, you can't just um, by, by want and will be effective in, in places that you want to grow and, and diversity and inclusion is certainly one of those places where you put a good deal of intention around it. Recruiting is probably the easiest example of it, it's one thing to, um, to, uh, to, to care about diversity in your workforce. It's a completely other one to actually build some systems and programs to, and, and to hold, hold yourself accountable yeah. uh, from a recruiting perspective to uh, you know, always casting a wide net and, and just having the right processes in, pr in place. Um, I think it, for us as an organization uh, in a city like Nashville, being an NFL team, being so uh, integrated into this community, I think it goes beyond our walls too recognizing that uh, we are leaders in this community. Uh, we have opportunities in this community to, um, it, when, when we have projects yeah. um, and we're recruiting vendors to recognize the opportunity that we have to, to, to you know, be, be growing local businesses mm -hmm. and making sure that, that those businesses are representative of our community too in, in terms of diversity. Uh, and so we are, Look to your to your question about the journey. Like it's we're not where we ultimately want to be. I don't know that this is something where you should ever really be satisfied. But we are as often as possible being intentional about adding the right programs, doing the right sorts of things to make sure that we can live into it's 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 a value that's important to us. But putting in those 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 programs and those systems to to hold ourselves accountable to living out those values. And I think too, it, as you mentioned, it goes beyond these walls. Um, some of the things we've done from a creative standpoint speak to that. And that's really impactful when other people see the recognition that we're providing um, beyond just the walls of the organization. So if you should talk about it, and, and yeah. maybe, maybe even, <laughs> yeah. I, I think we all know what, what, what we're talking about here, but maybe even going back to the inspiration for um, that project. So, um, you know, we have a tremendous opportunity with the platform that we have to shine a light in our community in places that normally they just don't have that type of exposure. So it's a responsibility that we, we enjoy having, quite honestly, when our heart's in the right place. And so um, every year, you know, the, the, the schedule, the NFL schedule is announced and it's a big secret, it's a big to-do, and it's, it's become a kind of a creative flex for all the teams with each other's competition. Um, this last season, instead of using the moment to just try to be the most creative we can be and, 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 that was, and end it there, we decided to use the moment, knowing that everyone's going to be looking at us, to shine the light on local businesses, specifically in, on the Jefferson Street area, because we wanted to celebrate 
these local businesses that just normally don't have a voice with a platform like ours, right? right? And if we are going to be real stewards of our community, like why not, right? right? And so that became uh, an ongoing thing, we, and, and we were able to create a program where, I mean, I mean, you know, that we're, we were highlighting these businesses every week at our home games, and I don't, I just find that it's, it's such a tremendous um, uh, joy when you have these quote unquote mom and pop shops, yeah. people who are just really building their, their business. And then all of a sudden, you know, you have this NFL team that turns around and says, no, 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 you're, you're here, you're with us too. Come on, come, come on this journey with they us. They felt right? seen. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. And so, so it's just, it was a great idea from the crew. Um, and hopefully it, it becomes something bigger than even th the first idea. Do you remember the inspiration for the project too? That's, I, I always thought that was a cool part of the story. Well, yeah, go ahead. We, we, had, we, had, the, um, we had council member mm -hmm. Sharon Hurt um, yeah. come speak to, we have, we have a concept we sometimes call 10 talks. Um, another part of this intentional uh, culture creation where it, it, it can be about anything, right? And we've had, we've had somebody from the military come talk about military experience. We've had people that come talk about it. It, it, it doesn't have to be work related. It's just something that's, it's an intersection with smart people, right? And, and council member Sharon Hurt came in and she, she told our organization about the history of Jefferson Street. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, what I heard from members of your team was that that 10 talk from Sharon was, was inspirational to them. And it was about the time that you were thinking about the, the schedule release. And I, I just, again, it comes back to that, that mm -hmm. intentionality of you know, delivering this, this, this information from council member Hurt to yeah. the organization that ultimately led to what was, I mean, just a really, really cool project. Oh, yeah, we were fired up. Yeah. We were so fired up just to hear about that extra layer and story and narrative of our community, of our backyard. That truly is leadership to me. When I think about leadership, you're showing the value and using the brand in a way that's non-traditional, right? Um, but you're educating your staff in the process about things that they may not ordinarily know otherwise. Um, and so if, if, if there are leaders with other organizations or companies looking at this right now and thinking about how can I use my platform and the organization that I work for to lead the space and the charge and the DEI. Like, what advice would you give to leaders in the community that are interested in doing that? I, I think some of it I, I've already said, but it's worth repeating. I do think it starts with, you know, defining that it's a value, mm -hmm. right? And but then building the intention around it and and having some some processes and systems to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable. Um, I, I think. I would, I would say to, to leaders to also look to your unique business and your unique opportunities and platforms. Um, what's interesting is a lot of the people from our organization that have joined recently uh, did not work in sports, did not work in, in the NFL. And so um, we, I think, bring this unique perspective of, oh my gosh, the power of this organization and the, uh, of our platform and, and our, um, our influence in this community. When pe people look to us as leaders in this community and they, they want us to lead this community. Um, and so we, we have really powerful creative team and, and social media channels. We, we have um, you know, a, a powerful network uh, in this community. Um, that's our story. Right? I, for, for leaders of other businesses, their story is going to be something different. Their opportunities are going to be, be different. But you know, if every business were to take a look at where they can have that influence, what their platform, uh, you know, how it can be used, um, this could be a really uh, wonderful and inspiring community. Mm -hmm. And I would say listening to your employees or your fans or customers in that sense too, because when you find things that are aligned, then you get those passion projects and everybody is rowing in the same direction. And um, a lot of, you know, we're, we're doing employee pulse surveys or we're doing things where we're trying to find, you know, what is it that makes our employees tick? And then, you know, when we're connecting those passions together, it just makes for something that's really special. Those 10 talks that Bert talked about, our tagline is employees worth inspiring. So we bring in motivational speakers that are here just to inspire our employees. And it's really, you know, really fun thing to see when we can align our company's values with the things that our employees are most passionate about and special things happen. Yeah. And when I think about the purpose of this round table is Black History Month round table, right? And the location of our facility sits 
smack dab in the middle of some of the most historic HBCUs in the country. Um, and I know there are a lot of students there with aspirations to work in sports, specifically their hometown team, the Tennessee Titans. Like, what advice would you give those students who have an interest in being in this building? I mean, we're, we're trying to do more outreach. Like Burke said, we're on a journey. Um, and so really we're starting, you know, internship program, a more robust one this year, where again, we're trying to be more intentional and also a fellowship program as well of just, again, using our platform to help, help, help students and cast that wider net. So that's one that um, we're really excited to roll out a, a more robust program this year. Yeah. Um, and to hit those those folks that they're they're passionate and they're right in our backyard. We don't even have, we don't have to go across country. Yeah. Um, they're right here. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. We uh, we've got a, a really long history with Tennessee State University in particular. We we actually share a stadium uh, for a few games a year. Tennessee State plays home games at Nissan Stadium and. Um, we, we have had conversations with the administration leadership over at Tennessee State over the last couple of years about what does the next generation of, of a partnership look like with Tennessee State University, far beyond just sharing a facility. Um, you know, we're, we're passionate about, again, understanding the power of our platform and, um, and the opportunities that we can provide. And we've got some really, really exciting things in mind with, with internships. Uh, we've, we've talked about um, actually sending some of uh, our executives over to Tennessee State University to be adjunct professors. Um, there's, uh, there's, there's really neat things that we have in mind. Uh, Meharry Medical College, uh, we're actually uh, hosting annually a, uh, a medical school, uh, school student uh, to have uh, internships in our sports medicine department, hoping, hoping to increase the, the representation among uh, trainers and medical staff in the NFL. Uh, so we, it's, we're really, really blessed to have uh, three great HBCUs in our city, and we're, we're paying attention to how we can, through that intentionality again, yeah. uh, ultimately uh, just increase the, the level and effectiveness of those partnerships. Yeah. Yeah, you spoke, you said representation, and that stuck out a little to me, because whenever I'm out in the community and I see young African-American students, and they're always so excited to see me in the position with the sports team. And most recently, you know, we hired our first black general manager and I've heard and I've heard from so many people how excited they are to see that. And so, you know, I think inclusion and belonging is very important and that shows or that sheds some light and gives some hope to students that have a desire to one day be here, they now can see themselves and that representation piece is very important. Um, when we think about our staff and we talk a lot about our culture and how important it is for people to feel that sense of belonging. Um, I know we talked about the 10 talks and let's just talk a little bit about some other ways that we're encouraging our staff to, to feel like the family you know, environment that we so desire for everyone to have. Yeah. The other one is employee resource groups, which I know you're, yeah. you're helping spearhead as well, Tina. Um, so right now we've got a professional women's network and we have a black professionals network um, and hoping again to continue to expand that this coming year just to not only have um, resources for those groups, but also then allies can attend those meetings and kind of figure out how together we can support each other. Um, it's just important to see other people that that look like you or have experiences like you in the organization because then you can bounce ideas off of each other or help each other when times are difficult or celebrate the joys with each other. Um, so we've got those two networks uh, this year, but hoping to expand that already Absolutely. <laughs> um, very soon. Yeah. So, yeah. You know, we also support our staff um, when they reach out and look for conferences or some external resources. Like we, we encourage them like, like crazy to, to make sure that um, you know, they actually are looking um, and, and that there isn't really a, a you know, financial burden, you know, mm -hmm. to, to them so they can actually gain education, gain exposure, network with others. Um, so that's, that's another way in which we, which we support them there. Very beneficial to me in my development was a lot of the professional development opportunities mm -hmm. I was able, I don't know that I would otherwise have had access to and the organization supported those and so I think that that's what's kind of helped and propelled me in my career personally. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's really cool. I think that speaks to, again, everything that we've said thus far at the table, the importance of hiring the right people, them fitting into the culture and creating a culture where there's inclusion and everybody feels like there's a sense of belonging. Mm -hmm. If there was um, 
just in, in, in wrapping up, like if there was something or advice you could give to young individuals that are wanting to be a part of the organization, especially from a diverse community, what, what advice or what words would you give them? I, I mean, part of the advice that I give to everyone who's, who's asking about how they can get into sports or get in with the Titans is, um, you know, just really, really commit to being the best version of yourself and winning the day every day. Um, I think the very practical thing, though, is to um, be on the lookout for some of these programs that we're going to start to roll out with respect to internships, and um, uh, we're, we're going to have we're going to have some really broad ones that are uh, that are entry level, kind of game day related, where we've got lots of opportunities for people to get into the organization, get to meet people. Um, the the reason why we're putting all these programs in place is because we want to meet the next generation of potential Titans employees uh, in in really meaningful ways and so I'd look out for those programs and and, uh, and and try to get in the mix yeah I would just say networking and relationships they matter so much the smallest relationships even if you're going and listening to somebody speak or stay after and talk to them or if you're you know game day getting in getting your foot mm -hmm. in the door any kind of relationship that you can kind of begin to show folks that you're a hard worker and your character and you're genuine. Um, everything else can be coached, you know, but trying to plant those seeds and those relationships early and just as, again, as many people as you can. Um, that's how I got here. I, I built a relationship with the folks on the Titans team at that time and, you know, never would have thought that I would be in the role that I am here today. Yeah. But it's because of hard work and building relationships. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd say just get started. Don't be afraid to reach out. Um, a lot of times, uh, especially students, mm -hmm. they're very apprehensive about reaching out to a team. I don't know anyone, um, but I mean, with LinkedIn and things like that, there's so many tools out there, but just getting over that initial fear of just reaching out and having a conversation and just being curious, um, that opens doors yeah. and it's very noncommittal. And honestly, we, we, we're looking for them. Awesome. Well, thank you all so much for being a part of the Black History Month Roundtable and I appreciate your time today. Thank Thanks, you. Tina. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.